Hi, I'm Kazool and welcome to my lair. So I'm working on the body padding for the fursuits that I'm building for my husband and I. And um, I'm in the middle of working on them, but I wanna be able to take you along the path. So I've done a little work, I'll catch you up on where I am, and then hopefully keep recording the steps as I go and stitch this together into a uh, comprehensible video. Here's Frosty Sculpt. Um, and I've done some changes on it. I did cut off the head so that I could define the neck area a little more because what we're concentrating on right now is the body pattern. So you can see I've, I've done a little tape pattern. So I covered all the areas that I wanted in tape and marked them, uh, kind of trying to figure out where seams can go and, uh, where uh, I need the padding and just registration marks, just different things you would need for pattern making. Um, you can see I still, ha I put some pieces back on the body and I have uh, the pieces for the leg and just the top of the foot right here already split up on the piece of paper. Now it's looking like a lot of pieces and I'm hoping to, to be able to simplify it down to smaller pieces, but I digress. Um, the body, um, I know I need some chest padding here. As you can see, like I need some chest padding and a little bit of back padding. Areas that I don't want padding is right here in the small of the back. I want that to be like really cinched around his waist. And I, and I don't necessarily need any right here, right uh, around his waist. So um, this piece will likely not be cut out just exactly like that. I just decided to pattern it bigger so that I, when I blow it up, I'll first build a, a model of it out of maybe cardboard or paper to just like fit it to the full size dummy of, of my husband, uh, to, uh, get that chest shape just right. Because around the waist, I want that like pretty tight to his. The, the uh, thickness of the fur will be just enough bulk there. Now, when we get down to the lower section where I need to build out this like extra body, um, that's where I'll need padding. I'll have to be careful in between the legs to not make it too cumbersome. And I'll also not be wanting to connect the whole leg to this part because I would want uh, him to be able to move around. So to like, you know, widen his stance, uh, bend down, bend the knees. So the attachment between the leg and this uh, body pod area will be something that I need to explore. Um, I may leave it connected around the butt area and just leave the front open to allow for maximum movement. Um, but th these are things that I'll need to test full scale uh, with my husband wearing it. And I have some ideas to maybe like keep, be able to keep this shape while he's moving around and be able to allow some stretch in this area uh, so that he can have the max amount of movement, but we'll see if those ideas work. Like I said, those things can only be tested on, on the full scale with a, a person moving in it. So these, these are the shapes that I've decided on. And I did take them all off and put them on this piece of paper to scan in the computer. So I had all that information as is. Um, then I was trying to decide whether I would like make them look all nice in the computer and print those out, tape them together and uh, go cut the pieces out that way. But I think I'm going to go a quicker route and just use my projector like I did for the wings. Um, so I, I got this little transparency, you know, this little clear piece of plastic that I'm going to move all these tape things to. And then I'm just going to project it up on my wall and trace each piece out uh, so that I can cut it out. Now the foam that I'm going to use is this. This is called, um, uh, what is it called? Reticulated foam is a name for it. This 
This particular brand is dry fast. If you see, it has like really wide open pores and it's quite rough and scratchy. It's used in uh, boat cushions or outdoor furniture because water will just go through it. And that's important to me to use on costumes so that I can wash it and it won't retain moisture and mold. It does have anti uh, microbial qualities to it as well. So this is the foam that I'm going to use. It definitely needs a, a liner on it. So I will cover it in spandex in the end to make it be able to slip into the fur suit uh, easily. And you've seen my dummies. They're already, I already have like a, a dance spandex suit on each of them. So that'll be like the base layer. Um, so none of this scratchy stuff will be on our skin or on our suits in the end. So I'm gonna move these over to the transparency and start tracing them on the wall. So I've got my projector set up behind and I've got it projecting up on my board like my wing. Um, I've got this line over here. It's about eight inches long. On the projector, that line is, is one inch long. So um, I know that my scale model is about one eighth. So now I'm just going to trace, um, mostly just the body section, uh, these two pieces here, this one and this one, uh, to see, and I'll, I'll cut those out first and then test them up against the dummy to see if they're the right size. The shape looked good. So it was time to cut it out of foam. The good thing about this dry fast foam is that it's a little bit more rigid than upholstery foam, so it's really easy to cut. So make sure your blade is reasonably sharp and all you have to do is kind of like saw it in there and then pull against it and it cuts really cleanly and smoothly. I really like working with it. I wanted to add a little bit of rigidity to the leg by adding a piece of foam on the inside that would help it hold its shape. So I went back to my sculpt and cut it off at the point of the leg where I wanted that interior structure and took another tiny tape pattern of that piece and blew it up just the same as you've seen me do before. But the process wasn't just as simple as that. There's an important step that you gotta take to make sure that the distortion doesn't get out of hand. So I've drawn some handy diagrams and hopefully you can understand a little bit better how to make patterns from a scale model. This diagram is showing a cross section of the foam shell that I've built and how I want to add in the piece. So this red line is representational of the pattern that I take from the scale model. Now the, I take the pattern with masking tape and that is very thin, like paper thin compared to the foam. So the red is the masking tape and the black lines is what the foam actually comes out looking like. So you can see the, the thicker material you have versus what you take the pattern with, the more distortion you get. So for this one inch piece of foam, you get about like half inch on either side of, of what you actually patterned. So for the interior piece, I took it and cut it out just like it was from the pattern, but I needed to take about a half inch off on all the areas that I intended to glue to the inside of the shell, uh, just to make sure that it holds the, the shape that I intended for it and reduces any of the distortion. With that done, I glued the rest of the leg shell together, but I did end up cutting a slit down the inside of the leg just to help get it on and off the dummy a lot easier. I've done a little work off screen and so I just want to catch you up to where I am right now. So I, first of all, on the bodysuit, I decided to add a zipper. Uh, the next thing I did is I took these body pieces off. This is the one that goes around the body like this, you know, and I've covered it in spandex, uh, just black spandex like the bodysuit. Um, I just took my serger around the edges. Uh, since this is a relatively flat piece, it was easy to just cover. These legs will be a little trickier to cover, but I'll show you how I do it. So I'm gonna pin these on now, 
and show you a little bit how I put the spandex on the legs and um, we'll see how it goes from there. Good thing about spandex is it's stretchy. So if you look at my leg, you bas we basically have two halves. So there's this pretty sharp um, edge right here. I did slightly bevel these foams to make that a sharper edge. So that is a natural place to put a seam. And so one piece would be right here. And this piece, like th this goes around the back of the leg and these um, will attach to the inner part of the leg. So I, th I'm, I can roughly get a piece that's, that is this shape that covers all this and then a little piece sewn on here. I'll leave the edges long so that I can stretch it around and glue it to the inside. So basically how I'm going to hold it down against some spandex and roughly trace the shape. It'll be close enough. Now I do want to cut two of these since the legs are the same. Um, and just to make it easy. Um, on this one, I did try cutting out a bit of right above the heel and I decided I did not like that, so I'm going to repair this piece with some foam and then they'll be exactly the same or close enough. So there's the first two pieces and just rinse and repeat for the longer side. So here's the sewn piece and I'm gonna be gluing it around and I wanna show you how I'm gluing it around. So I have this really awesome glue gun with this amazing long hot tip. And so I'll spread out some glue across this foam. Let's see, pull it here. Oh, you see I've like just made sure the foam is in the right place with these clips. Um, but this foam, you see it's a very coarse texture, but if you take this and just put a little glue around and then take the side and spread it out. Try to get as thin amount of glue as possible. Then stretch this over and hold it in place. Um, the thin hot glue is best because um, it'll cool down faster and be a little bit more flexible than, than big clumps. So I'm just going around stretching as I go and uh, just gluing bits of, bits of it around there. I'll eventually go to the inside and get these curved around like that and glued down. But that's just my tip for gluing, gluing the spandex to this type of foam. Just one more tip I wanted to share about gluing. So there's like always gonna be this little edge that pops up. Let's see if I can get a better angle at the edge of the spandex and it's really hard to glue down because the hot glue is really hot and you don't want to burn your fingers. So my solution is, you know, get the hot glue as best you can in there on the spandex side and use something large and metal like my water bottle and smooth it down. It'll It'll save your fingers, and since this is metal and filled with cold water, you know, it's cool. It'll instantly dry the, the hot glue too, so it's like instantly safe to touch. Go ahead. Are you like full zoom or whatever? Or full fisheye? Full fisheye, what? Like 0.6 zoom? No. Because you could get a lot of stuff in there. I like it. So how's it feeling? Comfortable, light, kind of nice. It's not like suffocating, like a lot of like foam pants, I guess you would call them. <laughs> oh, the solid foam padding that I've made in the past. Or that's like standard. Now your butt. 
has that collapsing problem like I've suspected, but that'll be addressed with the tail. It just happens when you get old. <laughs> um, I did just pin in a, just one single piece of corset boning in there and it's helping it keep its shape. So I could add like two of them and then that would be really helpful. The tricky part will be furring, furring this to be able to keep as much of that moment, movement in your legs as possible. Because imagine just waddling around with your feet as wide apart as they are right now, like, like that. Like this. Yeah, only being able to, and not being able to take many, the big, as big as steps forward. So you would be like taking tiny te steps. That'd be annoying. Yeah, that's, I'm trying not to make it like that. I mean, I can like bend my knees and everything too, so that's good. Yeah, the, the one thing that I'm, all this stuff is just pinned on right now till I can like decide the exact placement. One thing is that his, your knee is right here and this is a couple inches below your knee. So it's not hitting exactly. Do you think that would make it more comfortable to lift that up and or or maybe glue in another piece of foam to help you like have have more of the feedback directly from your knee probably because it just feels like it's just hanging there i think i think like where it's sitting on your body overall right now is great and and i will just add in another piece of foam in there that'll be the easiest solution because raising it up like when you like scoot cinched it up earlier just made threw off the proportions so i'm real happy with it i guess i shouldn't get my light in the shot i'm gonna start sewing this to the bodysuit i'm just using a a curved needle and some regular uh, all-purpose all thread just doubled up in a length and I, I just like to do a blanket stitch of this kind of stuff so first stitch I'll get it in place there going from the bottom through the middle loop it around pull it through simple blanket stitch you can find other videos that uh, explain it better but the blanket stitch I find is like especially if you do a little bit of a wider stitch is flexible enough these these points aren't going to be flexing too terribly much uh, but in places of stress like this is the intersection where the front piece meets like the front of uh, the body piece we're calling it the diaper piece because it's because that's just what we're doing. Um, like this little intersection will be under a bit more stress too. So right here will be. So my strategy to like make this like a more durable stitch is to um, every couple inches or so, or even like every inch or so in stressful places, I will tie it off. So make, make a loop, uh, flip, the needle around it a couple times like you're going to be tying off the seam just tie it there and then continue on stitching so that that way if like the uh, the stress and tension is too much in any one area and it breaks the the thread um only only about an inch will come unraveled so that's how I go about sewing all this body padding in place. It's a lot of hand sewing, but you know, sometimes you just have to do that. Those monotonous tasks on building a, a suit like this. So I'm going to just continue sewing for a while and then I'll do a recap. Doing this kind of sewing is a good time to just put on an audiobook and go. 
Yeah. Now that I've gotten to the edge, I think I'm at the end of the string. It's getting hard to make stitches, so just tying it off and we'll get another string to start and keep going around. So I did end up adding, I'll push this out of the way, another piece for the knee with the new foam that I got. So this one, I just cut out the exact same shape piece as below and just glued it in much higher. And I actually glued it to the uh, spandex leg here to keep it in place. Um, and I, when I had my husband try it on again, it kind of started, it poked out a little bit more than I would hope. Like, like this piece is poking out like this. So I've determined that if I just add a little piece of elastic here, it kind of helps keep it tamed in place, helps uh, keep this popped out. So I'm pretty much done with Frosty's body padding. I won't bother recording all the sewing on, so I'll do that off camera. Uh, and But I wanted to do a little bit of an analysis, uh, a, a, not quite a postmortem, but sort of, uh, about like what I would change already about doing padding like this and what I can change when I do my Griffin suits pattern. So uh, the first thing is like, it was a little annoying dealing with these dance suits that I chose because I chose the ones that were sleeveless and actually had a pretty low cut on the thing. And I thought that since there wasn't gonna be much padding up there, that it would be great to not have as much material there. It's always easier to cut fabric away from where you don't need it than add it on where you do need it. And I've found that there are places up here that I'd rather have a little bit extra fabric to sew things onto or attach things onto, but it's just not there. So I actually uh, may buy another cat suit for me to start mine on just because of how annoying that was. Another thing is that I decided to put the zipper, you remember, in the middle and just based on how the padding works, it would have been much better to put it down here on the side. And that was dumb, but like in a flurry of activity, I already sewed a zipper into my dance suit um, right in the middle. And my character has like an even more exaggerated built out chest. So that's going to be a problem too. So I think I'll start over with hers anyway, for the convenience. Um, it's, it's just enough. I'll just have to add some fancy things to help like, uh, pin these down. Cause I won't be able to sew them in place. Cause he needs to be able to peel it back to access the zipper to be able to get in. So that's a, another thing that I would change. Um, also, the pouches that I put in for the Under Armour in all the, the dance suit, those have just been a pain in the butt to deal with, even more so than, um, like, cause I did the same thing on the Goat Man, um, but it's been more of a pain in the butt trying to get things placed here. And like, especially, like, like I mentioned, because the, the low cut nature and the sleeveless nature of this dance suit, like it's just been a big pain in the butt. So, um, and then I was, as I was thinking about it, I'm like, I should just keep it simple and attach those pouches to the darn uh, Under Armour that we're gonna wear anyways. I'm definitely gonna do that on my own Under Armour. I still have to convince my husband to let me do that to his Under Armour. Um, another thing, the diaper piece, so-called diaper piece, like it, it needs a little bit more structure and I thought, oh, I'd just pin in some corset boning, but then that would be like annoying cause I'd have to make it removable so that the thing could be washable. And I thought, you know, why not just make this piece, cut out the same pattern piece basically of a stiff EVA foam and that'll help uh, support this area because it's the only one that really needs it. These other ones hold their shape pretty well, um, but just something for this. So I'm gonna try to line that with a piece of EVA foam. It's definitely something I'll do on my piece because I can just like actually put it inside this spandex uh, pocket that I built for it to line it. So those are the changes I'll make. Um, another change that I've already in the works to make is that I'm going to change the color 
of the underbody padding. Um, because historically I've had some problems with black bleeding. Um, it's also hard to capture on camera. And so I'm switching to just a, a neutral gray color for the spandex. And yeah, like you can buy dance suits in, in a gray color too. And it matches my new branding better. So that'll be pluses all around. So that wraps it up for this video. So I hope you enjoyed seeing this step. Um, well, I'll figure out what the next step is, but I'm also working on some new patterns. I uh, hope you look up, look forward to that. And I hope you remember to embrace your inner beast.